the beautiful little church of Santa Ana, which faces Calle 60 and Calle 45, was founded in the 1500s and rebuilt in the 1700s. During those times, it served the northernmost barrio of Colonial Merida, with a large population of indigenous Mayans and mulatos. The church is built on a raised platform, probably a former Maya temple platform, and is easily identified by its pyramidal spires. Santa Ana was said to be the city's farm, as it was the site of plantations that grew food for the city. In a historical document from 1834, Juan Federico Maximiliano Waldeck noted that Merida had 37,801 inhabitants and 3,984 of them were living in Santa Ana. While Santa Lucia was the site of the first cemetery in Merida, it was soon moved to Santa Ana, where it existed until the 1880s when it was moved to its current location in San Sebastián. The impetus for moving the cemetery was the construction of the Paseo de Monteo by a group of engineers headed by Rafael Quintero, the engineer responsible for paving the streets of Mérida. Once this work started, Santa Ana became a more desirable district and the former residents were forced out to other, probably more southern parts of the city. Santa Ana eventually extended as far north as the Quinta San Fernando, a large country estate owned by the Peon family, and Quinta San Jacinto, both torn down to build the Hyatt and Fiesta Americana, two of the larger hotels in Merida. Other large estates also were located there, one of which, El Pinar, still stands today in all its pink glory across from the Hyatt on Calle 60. Today, the area around Parque Santa Ana is a burgeoning art district, with several galleries and museums. There are also hotels, a few restaurants, a gas station, convenience stores, hardware stores, paint stores, and a frame shop. Banks line Paseo de Monteo in that district, along with more restaurants, the old archaeological museum, and a handful of mansions dating back from more prosperous times during the Hennigan boom. Santa Ana also has a small market with a few vegetable stalls and butchers, and a popular group of cocinas serving all the traditional Yucatecan foods and fresh juice. There are now also tourist shops along Calle 47, catering to the tourists that wander between the Plaza Grande and the Paseo and who gather at the end of the Paseo on Calle 47, known as the Remate. Yeah, this is like the famous one. For Saturday night, Noches Mexicanas, to enjoy the live music and shopping in the stands set up for the night, known as Puestos. The cocinas are a popular place for early morning meals, and the whole area is usually well attended on any morning, sometimes serenaded by local musicians hoping to earn a few pesos. Chicken, cochinita, pibil, pork, and pokchuk beef, or perhaps another Merida dish, the sopa de limon. How do you like it, Graziela? <laughs> or a fresh fruit drink. Salbutes are like tacos with beans fried into the taco shell are pretty delicious. Santa Ana is also a highly desirable section of town for extranjeros, and the part of it roughly between Calle 60 and 66 and Calle 45 and 55 is known unofficially as Gringo Gulch. Um, Santiago is one of the oldest colonias in Merida. The Santiago district is to the west and north of the Plaza Grande in the center of the city. The church, founded in 1637, 
was once much grander. Now, little remains of the original structure other than the modest sanctuary with the Baroque statue of Santiago. The front of the church and the main nave, supported by buttresses, was built in the 19th century. There is a park in front of the church and a market next to the church with fruits and vegetables, meats, and a good flower selection. There are also a host of excellent cocina economicas, sundry stores, and an ice cream store. There is also a children's playground in the park, a beautiful water fountain, surrounded by shade trees, and a large concrete area used at various times for skateboarding, big band music, dancing, fairs, and temporary markets. Surrounding the park, you can find a grocery store, a drug store, a movie theater, and a branch of Mexico's pawn shop chain, Nacional Monte de Piedad. Originally, so 350 to 400 years ago, Santiago was the area relegated to the indigenous and artisans. Due to its proximity to the central square, Santiago was one of the first areas to expand in population. It quickly became the shopping area for residents of San Sebastián, Ermita, and other areas who wanted to avoid the downtown. Famous figures hailing from Santiago include Manuel Cepada Peraza, a governor of Yucatan in the 1860s, the composer Guadalupe Trigo, Crescencio Carrillo y Ancona, a bishop of Yucatan who grew up in Santiago, and the educator slash writer slash reporter Rodolfo Menendez de la Peña, who died in Santiago in 1928. Santiago was once the German district, with the building on the corner once known as Quinta Los Alemanes. Santiago was the nicest place to live in Merida before Paseo de Monteo was built around the turn of the century in the early 1900s. And Calle 59 was the main formal entrance into Merida after Porfirio Diaz built the Centenario Zoo and Parque de la Paz. It is still the main road if you come from the airport and all of Calle 59 was renovated in 2013 so that it makes a beautiful entrance into the city. The Germans owned three big hardware stores in the Santiago district, all of which did their main trade with the haciendas. The diesel engines that powered the hacienda plants came from Germany in the late 1800s. So hardware was a natural business for the Germans to expand into in the early 1900s. In 1914, Santiago got its first movie theater, then called La Frontera, which also had a hotel and was also located on the west side of the park. That building eventually became the supermarket that is there today. Another theater called The Salon was built in 1915 on the north side of the park. It was later called the Apollo and presented zarzuelas, Spanish musical theater, and operettas, as well as films. In 1922, it was renamed Cinema Rivoli and today it is called Cines Hollywood. After some remodeling of the plaza between 1982 and 1984, the park began the tradition of holding Remembranzas Musicales every Tuesday night. This event brings residents and tourists together to dance the cha-cha, the mambo, salsa, and other Latin dances to live big band music under the stars. For extranjeros, Santiago is one of the most desirable downtown neighborhoods, and there are many American and Canadian-owned renovated colonial homes in the area. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of one of Merida's neighborhoods. I'm going to be making other videos of the other popular neighborhoods to visit or live in in Merida, as well as some other videos of the city, including the cuisine, the cantinas, and the different things to see and do in Merida, as well as in the general area, including the coast, cenotes, 
small towns surrounding the city, etc. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to see those other videos of the city of Merida, I have a link in the description below this video where you can find uh, all those videos of Merida as well as the other videos I've made uh, traveling throughout eastern Mexico this time around in 2021. You'll also find in the description a link to the first time I traveled through Mexico three years ago bicycling through the country through western and central Mexico. That was part of a larger trip bicycling through Latin America. I've also bicycled through Eastern Africa and Eastern Europe, and I have playlists for all those countries that I've bicycled through available on this very same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. Alternatively, if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I got to see and do, I have that available over on my website, followthehumoftheearth.com. Where you can click on the different locations and see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures through Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and beyond, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Alright, so that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.